Good morning, it's Tuesday, June 27th, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Searching for Joy, Part 3. In our scriptures, Paul's letter to the Philippian church, chapter 1. Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Whenever I pray, I make my requests for all of you with joy, for you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it's finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. There's a question that must be answered before leaving all the Mudville stuff behind. That question is, Who are the most joyful people? It stands to reason that believers who practice their faith would be the most joyful. As participating partners in the faith, we share together the mystery and splendor of the gospel, and that produces some things. It produces joy of purpose. Paul called himself a servant. The word literally means slave. That doesn't sound too joyful, but in ancient times a servant could come and go as he pleased within certain limits. A slave, however, was a lifetime property of his master. Paul humbly addressed himself as a slave of Jesus Christ. He had given over his life to Jesus. It takes a great deal of humility to enslave yourself to another. What can make a person do something like that? Paul sensed that being in Christ was greater than anything else life offered. Paul was a mainstream mover and shaker of the highest order. Then he met Jesus on the road to Damascus and he discovered all that self stuff was empty, empty, empty. Paul had been climbing social, political, and personal ladders, but compared to the loveliness of Christ, all that personal fulfillment stuff paled, lost its attractiveness, faded into oblivion. Paul used the phrase, in Christ, or in the Lord, some 150 times in his epistles. Much like a fish lives in water, Paul could feel the close, comforting, compelling presence of Jesus at every waking moment. Paul had given himself over to the cause of Christ. It had become his purpose. There's something unique and joyful about people who are driven from within, a noble cause that's from above. There's a novel entitled The Man Who Lost Himself, and in that novel a detective is trailing a man in Paris. He wants to know if the man he was after stopped at a certain hotel, so he went to the clerk at the desk and he gave his own name asking if he was there. He knew he wasn't registered. He wanted to have the clerk search the register so he could peek, but to his surprise the clerk looked up and said, yes. He's been looking for you. He's in room number 40. I'll have you shown right up. (laughs) What could the detective do? He followed the clerk to the room. Whereupon, opening the door, the man came face to face with another man who looked remarkably like himself, just 20 years older. The story behind that story is that there's a person out there whom you must face someday. It's the person you're becoming. How is that happening, you ask? Well, the purpose to which you give yourself will define the person you'll become. Paul gave himself to Christ as Lord and Master, slave for life. For you today, the spiritual principle here is that the slave will do the Master's will and in the doing become like the Master. In Christ, Paul's life was purpose-filled, purposeful. He called it the joy set before him. A partnership in the gospel gives joy of purpose. And tomorrow we're going to look past purpose to peace and prayer. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.